this isn't going to be a video review so much as it is a comparison. I mentioned in my last video regarding this watch that if you want to travel, this watch allows you to have a global perspective on the time zones. I just wanted to show you what it's like to actually change the time zones. Now, and in, case, in case anybody's out there that's wondering, don't worry, nothing will get messed up. What's going to happen is the watch will just have to obtain a new signal tomorrow morning. No problem at all. Um, and, even, and even if you go for a signal without a few days, without a signal for a few days, excuse me, um, it should be fine as far as keeping the correct time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and press our 4 o'clock. And for those of you who are sighted, you'll probably see it says light slash set. Oops. So if I just push it, like I did there accidentally, the little light comes on. But if I push and hold it... So we're actually going to do that this time. So we're going to push S1 to set this. Come on. So we're going to move it to Eastern Time. You notice, for those of you who can see, the little signal tower went away. And if I ask for an audible update, that's standard because it needs to obtain a new signal once you do anything to the time. Now I'm just going to show you what it's like to do the same thing on one of the more common analog talking atomics. To do that, we're going to press and hold our 8 o'clock button. Set alarm, press 10 o'clock button to set... And continue until we hear time zone setting. Alarm on, on, chime on, on, time zone setting, press 10 o'clock button to set... 10 o'clock. Press 2 o'clock button to set 8 o'clock button to confirm. Now, before I go any further, you guys saw how the digits on the watch adjusted, right? Well, how does this work? I'll show you. USA Mountain, USA Central, USA Eastern, confirm 7.30 p.m. And now this watch is going to remain completely inoperative for the next several minutes. I apologize if anybody's getting bored. You might want to skip ahead. What you can do is you can move your cursor around on the timeline. It'll give you a visual element of what's going on in the video. But I'm primarily showing this just so people can see exactly what happens with these analogs, how long it literally takes. Now, watch this. If I try to do anything with the watch, it's completely unresponsive, okay? I can't get a time announcement or anything out of it. And remember, this one's going to, whoops, fall on its face. This one's going to Eastern Time. This one's already on Eastern Time.
Incidentally, what's going on audibly is the audible clock is still keeping time. But utilizing the second hand in such a fast motion takes so much power that all of the audio functions are completely locked out. As you can say, as you can see, this watch adjusted within a couple seconds. It's taking this one at least a few minutes. And if you're thinking, well, gee, this is bad, you've not seen anything yet. Wait until we go back the other direction. Just about done. And for those of you who cannot see at all, if you listen very, very hard, you could probably hear the watch, watch secondhand moving in fast motion. This one is saying that it's 7, 7, 7, 18, so that's probably where this one's going to stop. Let's see if the seconds match. The time is 7, Roughly. For some reason, this one likes to be about a second fast. I don't know why, even though it says both of them are updated. Now, here's the fun part. Um, I'm going to go and set the time zone again back to where I need it to be. Now, with this one, we only get the USA time zones. This one, we get all four time zones plus... UK, Germany, Japan, 60 kilohertz, Australia, 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 60 kilohertz, What's going to happen is this watch is going to need to pick up another signal tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. Not going to be a problem. What about this one, though? You saw the hands move forward. Incidentally. USA. Time not updated. That's standard. Again, it needs to get a new signal, um, which you can either manually invoke by pressing your 2 o'clock button, pressing and holding it. Same with this one. You push and hold 2 o'clock, then you leave it for... A few seconds. On this one, the signal tower flashes. On this one, the second hand moves fast again and then stops. Um, both of those, in this case, would require visual uh, a visual um, assistance, but the best way to do it is to just count to three and set the watch down on, on, a, on a surface, on a wooden surface, with the back facing up. Same deal with this one. Back has to be facing up because the receiver is in the back. Now, we just adjusted this one back to Pacific time, right? So what happens when we want to do the same to this one? Set alarm. Time zone setting. Press 10 o'clock button to set. Let's do that. Press 2 o'clock button to set 8 o'clock button to confirm USA Pacific. 
Now, one thing you should know is I consider this to be a domestic watch, considering it has only all four U.S. time zones. This one, um, given what you've just heard about the U.K., Germany, and Japan, that I consider a global watch. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and say USA Pacific. We're going to hit 8 o'clock to confirm. Now, before I do, you might think the watch will move backwards three hours, right? Nope. USA time not updated. Oh, we have to get back into the menu. Oops. USA time not updated. Set alarm. Press 10 o'clock button. Alarm. Chai time zone setting. Set time. Press second. Set alarm. Chai time zone setting. Press 2 o'clock button. To set 8 o'clock button. To confirm. USA Pacific. None of the international countries were announced. We just wrapped around to Pacific. We're going to confirm that. Now, again, I, I told you the hands would move backwards, right? Confirm 4.22 p.m. Wrong. This thing is actually going to sit here and spin for approximately another 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not kidding. It could take that long to go back three hours because it's really going forward nine. If that doesn't make sense to you, congratulations. It doesn't to me either. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out since before, since since I got my first one of these, because the first one of these was also an analog. I did the same thing. The hands just spin and spin and spin. Even if you're going backwards in time, they'll spin forwards. And all four of the audio buttons, these four here along the side, for those of you who can see, your 10, 2, 4, and 8, all four of them are completely locked out. And you have to wait until the hands stop spinning. But I just wanted to show you that video as a comparison between the digital and analog atomics and why I personally feel that the digital ones are a lot better because they you don't have to worry about secondhand alignment or, or waiting. You know, you could probably hear it even. You could probably hear this one... You have to listen very closely, but you might be able to hear it. But no, this is why I think that if I had to choose, if I had to get, ever get another one, it would definitely be a digital. Um, I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch this. Um, I can already see the dislikes coming in. But anyway, I just wanted to show that to you to compare that, because I know I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a number of people to watch this. Maybe, maybe not. But if, anybody's, if anybody has seen the other video where I reviewed this one, and and noticed how I made a comment about how um, how I bashed the analog watches. Now you know why. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.